Hi everybody, this is Vicki of Cruising Princess Cruise Lines with Vicki. I hope you enjoyed the last podcast where we spoke to Barb and Craig about their land portion of their Alaskan cruise. Today we're going to ask them some questions and comments uh, about their seven-day southbound uh, Alaskan cruise from Whittier to Vancouver on the Coral Princess. So we're back. Uh, this is the second part of the podcast all about Alaska and the deluxe escorted tour that Barb and Craig did. Uh, Barb and Craig got off the ship yesterday and we went and met them and we've dragged them home so that they can do this podcast. But but really, the, the first reason was that we wanted to see them again. <laughs> but we're, we're back and um, we're going to go over, you were on the Coral Princess, was that right? Yes. Yes, yes. And have you been on that ship before? This is our third sailing on the Coral Princess. Um, it was actually our second cruise back in 2005 through the Panama Canal. And then we did a short repositioning cruise from San Francisco to Vancouver. Uh, I think it was 2006. So it's been a long time since we've sailed on her. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a lovely ship. I haven't been on her for very long, but uh, mainly the Island Princess I've been on. It's similar. The Coral and the Island are two of our favorite ships in the Princess fleet. We, we like them because they're really spacious. Um, I think they have one of the largest uh, uh, space per passenger ra ratios in the entire fleet. Lots of open space, uh, nice public uh, areas, uh, just Really, really nice. You never feel particularly crowded. What do you think of it? Uh, they are our favorites. Uh, that, that that one in the island. That are and they've made improvements to the coral. They've put an international cafe in, which we really like. Um, they've made a few changes. They, I think they cut the casino in half, which is fine with us because we're not gamblers and so we don't partake in any of that. So it was it was very nice. For those who have not uh, cruised on the Coral or, or her sister, the uh, the island, they're kind of unique in that the uh, those two ships do not have aft facing balconies. Um, the entire aft area of the ship uh, has public viewing uh, areas, and uh, they're just they're wonderful. Um, I love that public viewing area yeah, on the aft. People yes. forget about it, but they go up front. But I like the aft one. Yep. Oh, it is. It's it's just it's it's beautiful, and it is unusual because uh, most of the ships that are that are out there today, not just Princess, but most, um, they they get a lot of money for aft facing mm -hmm. balcony cabins, and uh, for for these two ships, they chose not to go that way. Hmm. Plus, the ships are. Uh, they offer probably the greatest percentage of balcony cabins of any Very ship in the, uh, in the Princess fleet. Very few insides. Uh, we were on the green deck and uh, there, were, there were maybe a half a dozen inside cabins way aft and apart from that, uh, there only maybe a handful uh, on the entire deck. So you had a, a balcony cabin on Caribe. What balcony did you have? 622. Thank you, God. This is such small print printing on the. I know, really. Looking at the cruise wish book here. Um, and so you're on one of the bump outs. We at were. the forward edge of the app bump out on the uh, on the port side. Beautiful location. It, it was nice, except it was very windy when we were moving because we were, the wind was coming straight into the balcony. So yeah. it, that for that, I'm not sure I would choose that balcony again. Yeah. I would have rather be the back, back end of the bump out instead of the front end of a bump mm -hmm, out. Mm -hmm. But it was a nice balcony because it was the wraparound and you could see really, really well. Yeah. And so you, we covered this uh, last time, but you guys arrived from Whittier. You'd just done a seven day land portion. It was nice and smooth and easy to get on the ship. Incredibly so. Uh, Whittier is one of those ports that uh, it's very small. There's not a lot going on. Uh, usually uh, the boarding uh, takes place based on when the coaches or the trains uh, show up and you'll get a, a, a lot of people will, will uh, get off and uh, board the ship at that time. But if you happen to arrive um, at a different time, you, uh, you'll encounter little, if any, weight. Yeah. Do you know how many people were doing back-to-backs uh, on the ship? Did they mention anything about They probably would have mentioned on the first leg because people could have gone up to 
right. Whittier and then back. In many cases, people do that because uh, depending on the fare structure, it's often uh, less expensive to cruise back than fly. to fly. That's right, yeah. Because you're again, looking at international flight often. Or and you have, <laughs> you have the problem that, of course, Whittier is isolated, and uh, it's, it's probably the better part of an hour's drive to get mm -hmm. to Anchorage, uh, which is the, the nearest airport. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bernie and I did that back-to-back. Uh, -back and uh, for, for anybody going to Whittier, uh, did you spend any time? Did you get off and look anything at Whittier? Not that there's a whole lot there, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we were on a back-to-back. -back and and I, I'll just add that there was something we did, which was the 26 Bay uh, cruise that Princess was doing uh, as one of their excursions. But we were hesitant to book it because we weren't sure what the weather would be like. So we waited till we arrived in Whittier and we had found that we could basically just, you know, exit the tented area where they uh -huh. were checking you in, turn right and right, 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 just go around where the tent is. And there was a little booth there that you could buy your own tickets to this 26 Bay excursion for um, a, a good price. And we, we got on and, and we had a wonderful wonderful tour and I encourage anybody that's interested in doing that to do the 26 Bay excursion. The, the 20, one. Oh, Bernie's correcting me. It's the 26 Glacier. Yeah. You know what? Sometimes my memory isn't totally corrected, but Bernie's coming here telling me it was a 26 Glacier Bay excursion. Um, and it, we had all the people from Princess that were there as well as some tourists that were around. And that was, a, that was probably the best because we saw glaciers really close up. Our issue was that uh, it was uh, the weather was not good, and uh, it it would have been difficult to do yeah. uh, much of any excursion at that point. <laughs> yeah. and we were we were cold, we were a little wet, and uh, we were we were ready to to get on board and start the pampering. Yeah, I <laughs> I could I totally understand where you're coming from. Yeah, and we even walked into town, which maybe was a. 15, 20 minute walk, it really was, a, uh, Bern, again, Bernie's sticking his hand out saying five minutes, but he walks a lot faster than I do. Uh, and, uh, and they have a few shops and a couple restaurants and there's, a, there's, there's really very little to see there, but it is beautiful. Whittier is one of those rather unusual places. Uh, the entire town lives in one structure, uh, baggage towers the entire town. And so the post office, it's on the first floor of that uh, facility and you, everybody just goes down there to get their mail. Isn't the school part of it or something? Or it's I, right believe next it door? <laughs> I believe it is. I believe it is. Very strong. Everything I know they said was connected, you know, like you could walk so you didn't have to go out into the element. Yeah. Yeah. No. There's, there's really not a lot there. So if you need to get supplies, you will be paying quite a, a high premium, I believe, because it's... And they are limited. They are limited, yes. Yes, but it is a nice port. I know when we were there, we just hung out on the ship for quite a while and then went on this tour. Most most people that are uh, that catch the ship, um, they they will arrive uh, through the Anchorage Airport and then uh, travel by coach uh, down uh, along the road south through the tunnel to to get to Whittier where the ship docks. And for those that don't know, the reason for that is because Anchorage does not have a deep enough uh, port to, uh, to allow the larger ships to come in. I think there might be one Holland America ship that actually does dock in Anchorage, but it's pretty much the only one. Everybody else uh, docks at Whittier. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's, so that's some good ideas. <clears throat> so uh, you were in a Cree balcony. You get on the first day. You had to do your mustard drill, right? Uh, of course. Oh, yes. Yeah, that was oh, yes. Painless. And it's... Uh, it's just it's it's tedious, especially for people that have cruised over and over again. But again, it's it's a necessity. Uh, it's important that uh, everyone uh, be aware of what the uh, the safety uh, mechanisms are on the ship. And Princess has gone to a uh, a, a scanning method of verifying attendance. Uh, they scan your cruise card as you enter the muster stations. And if for some reason you elect not to attend. Um, they know it, and they they come visit you to invite you to a uh, a follow up. A new excursion that they have called. That's right. <laughs> Precisely. That's free. That's free. And if you don't attend that one, uh, they continue to come visit you and encourage you to uh, to attend a, a yes. drill. And in fact, it, it's mandatory. And if you do not follow it, they they could technically ask you to leave the ship. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 
Um, so, what did you do the first year on board? What were some of the first things you did? What did you do that night? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> That's right. we, we went into relaxing mode. We, we've seen Alaska a lot, and so we weren't planning to do a whole lot with this cruise. We just wanted to get on and kick back and, mm -hmm. and relax. We met friends, who, uh, a lady that I was born and raised with, basically. And so we met them, and they were in the cabin right next to us. So we had the balcony open up between us and had a really good time with that. Unfortunately, it wasn't real balcony weather, so we weren't out there much. But when we were cruising the glaciers and everything, obviously we were out there. Mm -hmm. we, um, we elected to do any time dining on this particular cruise. Uh, we're, we've done traditional dining for most of our cruising life, uh, but uh, the uh, our South American cruise, uh, 49 days last February, was our first experience going to any time dining, and we, we found that we, kind of, we quite enjoy it because it gave us the flexibility, and this cruise was pretty much that, to either go to the dining room when we chose to, or we could uh, go to Horizon Court and just enjoy the buffet, or room service. And the room service uh, is, is really quite nice. The, the, the variety on the menu, and they're, they're, they're pretty prompt. Uh, food deliveries were typically 30 minutes or less. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, I find, you know, you're busy in the port all day, especially Alaska, because sometimes they're there late and got the elements and, yeah, yeah, no. And you guys have cruised a lot. So how, what, what number of cruise on Princess was this? 24. 24. So it's not like you had to rush to get to the sail away dinner because mm -hmm. you've never been to it before. That's right. But it is nice. I, I don't want to discourage people, but, you know, it don't, don't feel guilty if you want to skip a couple dinners in the dining room and just do something casual. One of the, uh, the things that uh, experienced cruisers uh, come to accept is the fact that there's all this food that's scattered around the ship. And there's as much of it as you care to, to eat, but there's no requirement for you to do so, that you, you don't have to uh, eat all the food that they, they provide uh, to get your money's worth. Um, <laughs> if you do, as uh, we've been told, you will go on as a passenger and you will come off as cargo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, th there's no need to be doing that unless that's your desire. Uh, who was your captain on the ship? Uh, Niccolo Benetti. Oh, very, very good. I uh, don't think I could have said that. Though. Italian gentleman uh, with one of the biggest, broadest smiles you'll ever he come did across. He a great smile. Great <laughs> Bar's smile. really smiling right now. Yeah, so was he good to smile. look at, too? <laughs> Not, I mean, he was a, he's just he's, so nice. Yeah, he just had a very pleasant smile. Oh, that's great. And who was your cruise director on this one? Do you remember the name? Susan Rawlings. Okay, Susan Rawlings. Okay. We've not sailed with her before. No. Um, we've seen a number of the cruise directors, but we had not sailed yeah. with her. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and again, seven days, quick key room. Yeah. You, you just don't get as involved as you would on a, no. a longer no. voyage where you're you know, more relaxed doing doing a Caribbean or something. I find you're out on deck more. And, right, yeah. We also found on this particular cruise um, uh, the uh, percentage of the ship that were first-time cruisers was very, very high. Oh, yeah, I think you mentioned that. How many platinum and how many elite were there? You told me. There were only six. The, again, the ship's capacity is right around 2,000, and there were 69 elites, and I think there were around 120-something platinum. uh, platinums. And uh, that's, that's really, really small. Wow, because we sailed with Barb and Craig during our South America trip, and that's almost the opposite. There was oh. maybe 60 blue carters on that South America trip. <coughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so the first day was College Fjord. So you get there in the afternoon, right? Kind we of did not go to College Fjord on oh. this one. We, uh, from, uh, from Whittier, yeah, we yeah, went Hubbard. directly to uh, uh, Yucatan Bay, where oh, okay. Hubbard Glacier is located. Oh, you went to Hubbard Glacier. Then. Yes. Oh. Oh. Yeah, the, this one, uh, it, it, the itinerary will change. Sometimes they go to College Fjord, uh, other times they'll go to Hubbard. Hmm, okay. Uh, yeah, I know that when you do the... When we did it, it was one trip up, we went to Harvard. The next trip down, we went to uh, College Fjord and both went to the National Park. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Glacier. So how was the glacier? Because it's the end of the it's season. How much was there? Calving like crazy. Yeah. That was really cool. The, the weather was, was not good. Um, it was heavy overcast and fog. 
Um, we, we had the, the ship's foghorn going off all night long and much of the day. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was that foggy. But it opened up when uh, we, we got, got the in glacier. close to the glacier and the fog would lift, so we had a, a fairly decent view of the, of the glacier, but yet good. with heavy overcast skies. Whereas, um, like, I mean, because I, we usually have done it in May, which, you know, is the beginning of the season, we often can't get that close to the glacier because there's just too much ice in the water. How was it this time? Oh, we were yeah. quite close. They yeah. brought us in oh, quite that's close. Great. Yeah, because the end of the season, so a lot is melted. Okay, that's, that's well, not We've the always done May doing. also. Yeah. So this was our first time going up in September, and it was very nice. Did you see any uh, seals and stuff on on the ice? Not on the ice, but there in the in the water there were uh, occasional sea otters and uh, and seals. Did you have did, you know? Did you bring your binoculars? Of course. Yes. Oh yes, and the uh, long lens on the camera. Yeah. Okay. Good. Because I that's one tip I have is bring a pair of good binoculars. <clears throat> they're they're priceless. It's such yeah, a yeah. Especially in Alaska. Yes. <laughs> and and the ship's naturalist uh, uh, would commonly come on the uh, public address system while we were up close to, to, the, to the glaciers and in some of the areas where wildlife sightings were more common and, uh, and point out things that were going on. Mm. And that's very handy. One of the things to, to note, however, is that the, the broadcasts do not go into your cabin. Um, they're on the open decks only. However, if you tune, tune to on the coral, it was uh, channel 41, which is the front-facing camera, uh, the naturalist uh, yeah. Yeah. audio would, it would be there. Yeah, that's nice perk. It's hard to hear on your balcony, though. Oh, it is. Yeah, but Unless yeah. You crank the volume up. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <clears throat> yeah, that's a nice thing to do. I remember we did that on the uh, South America, too, going through Coast yes. Road with you guys, yeah. So you had that. Did you go to the dining room? Was that formal night? Was that your first formal it night? It was formal yeah. night. So no, we, we did not bring formal attire. Mm -hmm. We decided to bypass the formal this time. It's the first time we've done that. But uh, so we went to the Bayou Cafe, which is one of their Bayou specialty Cafe. restaurants. Yeah, it's very unique to just the Coral It is. Island. It's very New Orleans style. And <laughs> the guy was kind of cute because um, for Cruise Critic, we wore uh, Mardi Gras beads. And I had a whole bunch of Mardi Gras beads that I had picked up at the dollar store. And I had colors that they didn't have on the ship. And the guy was just ogling for my Mardi Gras beads. So I made some trades with him on Mardi Gras beads. Mm -hmm. He was very happy because I gave him lots of unique Mardi Gras beads. Do they still have, because when you come in, don't they have a, a pair of the Mardi Gras beads? Yeah, on they have them on the table, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, yep. That was kind of fun. Yep. And was there a nice jazz band playing there? Not at the hour that we were there. No, we were there early. Yeah. But it was a wonderful dinner. Wonderful dinner. The, the, the bayou is, a, is, is kind of unique because uh, it doesn't really compare directly to the restaurants and any of the, of the other ships. No. no. The, uh, it, it acts as a steakhouse. Um, they have no crown grill on the, this particular ship. Um, they offer the steaks similar to those that you'll find in the Crown Grill, although the selection is not as extensive. Uh, they do offer a And few. they have a Cajun flair. They definitely yeah. have a Cajun yes. flair. Yes. Yeah. They offer a few other dishes that you would not typically find in the Crown Grill, but uh, uh, just a, a very enjoyable experience, uh, uh, just a very nice uh, evening out. And uh, in our opinion, well worth the $25 per person cover charge. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I enjoyed the Bayou. We, if anybody is wanting to see uh, a bit about a menu and stuff, we did it two years ago. So if you search Bayou Cafe, you'll probably find the podcast where I talked about it. Um, what did you have? Do you remember what you had? <laughs> we both had fillets, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It was, and they were, they were, they were very, very good. Yeah. But the appetizer shrimp was... No. To die for. Oh, to die Absolutely for. Absolutely yeah. to die for. Awesome. Huge shrimp. Was it a bit of spice? Was it a bit of... Yes. Yeah. They, they were, were fabulous. Classified as peel and eat uh -huh. shrimp, but there was no peeling. No they, peeling. Th yeah. Which is... I don't like to peel anyway. But. For those, uh, for people that have had peel and eat shrimp, uh, that's kind of an experience because it seems like you spend half your time doing the peeling and yeah. half the time doing the peeling. They were delicious. I'm on vacation. That's right. Yeah. And um, I'm just wondering... What did you do during the day that you weren't visiting the glacier? Was there just relaxing, enjoying your yes. day? Your yes. day? Barb and Craig know how to cruise. They really do come back new and yes. new and new again. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it was, a, it was kind of an unusual cruise for us because normally uh, we enjoy visiting the uh, the Platinum Elite Lounge uh, each day just to, to to have a beverage or two and enjoy the the uh, the hors d'oeuvres that they offer. And the company uh, of people. And the company of others. Uh, on this particular cruise, uh, we went just once. Uh, we found that we were just uh, relaxing and, and enjoying a little bit more than normal, and uh, we, we actually did uh, buy a, a bottle of adult beverage at the uh, uh, through room service, and mm-hmm. we used that instead. And yeah. uh, surprisingly, uh, it seems like. You know, twenty-five dollars for a three seventy-five milliliter bottle of uh, Jack Daniels would uh, is quite a bit compared to what your short prices are. Well, sure. But, but if you compare that against you know what the bar prices are to sit down and have just yeah. one drink, um, that whole bottle was probably the, the equivalent of a couple of a couple of days. Plus, just the relaxation of doing it in your cabin and I agree, just watching the water go by. <laughs> it's just amazing. Yeah. People always get upset because it's not the same price as they'd buy at home in their liquor store, but this isn't your liquor store. And that's right. if you had bottle service at a bar somewhere, that's it would you'd be paying a lot more than that. Yep. Oh, indeed. Yeah. Uh, I think I think it's easy to be put off uh, by the pricing, but you have to step back just a moment and and consider what it is that you're getting, when you're getting it, and. Uh, doesn't seem so bad at all. Yeah. Well, last night we went out for dinner with Barb and Craig, and that martini I had was ten dollars. So yeah. really, it's comparable. You know, Prince's is even cheaper than that. They are. They yeah. really yeah. are. Their 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 booze prices are not that high. But we just like the quietness of sitting in our own yeah. cabin and doing it, like the yeah. sea liquors on the yeah. forty nine day. <laughs> and they don't like me being in my my house coat up on the deck Absolutely. in the bar having That's a drink. Right. Yes. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I remember that from the last cruise. They, they, did, they did bounce you out, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, well, that's when we ended up in your cabin having a drink. <laughs> well, yeah, you'll see lots of pictures of Barb and Craig uh, on our South America trip, but I will put up some pictures if uh, they're, they can maybe share some of their maybe pictures of their cabins or their views or what the, you know what they saw in each mm-hmm. of the ports, that would be really great. I'll put it up on the podcast. Um, so next day you were in uh, National Bay? That's Glacier, Glacier, Glacier Bay, Bay National, Bay National Bay. Park. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, oh. lousy weather until we got to the glacier. Heavy fog. Yeah, but the glacier, it opened up. Again, lots of calving. I think this time, because we've never seen calving before, but we oh. always go in May. So we've never, you know, I don't think there's that much activity because it's still so cold. But going in September, there was a lot of calving, and that was pretty cool. There was one shot, there was a pretty good chunk that fell, and I had my camera up, and I hit the video, and I got so excited that I hit it again and turned it off. (laughs) I was so upset. I've got like a second and a half. Of a glacier, of a, a cabin. <laughs> <laughs> but I did get it. <laughs> Again, one of the joys of cruising at this time of year uh, to the glaciers is that um, the ice uh, on the on the surface of the water has retreated. There's very little of it, so they can bring the ship in pretty close. Uh, the Marjorie Glacier is uh, right at the end of the main inlet. I think it was called Car Inlet. Um, and uh, they were able to get you up very close to be able to see it. And uh, they, uh, w- when you go in, the port side has the uh, has the views of the glacier, but they uh, will spin the ship around uh, in front of the glacier so that the uh, the starboard side get excellent views as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then uh, on our departure, we actually sailed uh, uh, on the way out. We we made a right hand turn and uh, and uh, sailed up the Johns Hopkins Inlet uh, and uh, got reasonably close to the Johns Hopkins Glacier. And uh, when when we were there in May, we never got up there yeah. because that part uh, that I inlet that was pretty much iced over. Well, and also the baby seals. They don't let you. They don't let the ships up there until like September because of baby seals that they just don't let you in. So it was pretty special that we got to go in there. That's, that's a nice, yeah, we've only seen it from a distance, really. Yeah. So um, if people aren't aware, they bring on a park ranger, don't they, early in the day uh, mm-hmm. when we pass the entrance to the park? Indeed. Um, and the, the ship doesn't stop. Uh, the, uh, the ship uh, decreases speed, and the, uh, the boat carrying the rangers will nudge up to the port side of the ship. And they actually climb up a rope ladder from uh, their little boat uh, to uh, to get onto the 
on the ship, mm -hmm. and uh, they depart the same way. Uh, we've watched them do this a couple of different times, and it's always an adventure because obviously if the ship or their boat happens to change speed or move up or down, life gets very interesting very quickly. Mm -hmm. And uh, check your patter because I know that they will set up a station in the atrium usually yes. where they can answer questions and have information. One of the things that they offered this time that we had not seen before is that they were selling, and I think it was $25 to $30, $30. Um, a, uh, uh, basically flash a thumb drive, a flash drive, full pictures. of pictures. Oh. And they're not copy protected. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just... Was uh, that from the park or was that on board at the photo no, department? That's, no, that's the park. park. Really? Well, that's good. So I guess then funds would go back to the park, I would hope. Yeah, I believe that's the case. And we got one in Denali, too. Yeah. Denali yeah. had a, a flash drive for sale. That one was $25, I think. But so we even, bought them both. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah, even, if, even if the weather is poor, uh, you, can, you can get uh, really nice shots uh, from one of these. And then when you consider what you're getting, the price is really very nominal. Well, that, that's amazing. Yeah, that's great. I know that they also, Princess puts a copy of the map of the National Park in your mailbox yes. the <laughs> night before so you can actually see where you're traveling. Yes, yeah. exactly. Did you see any other wildlife up in the strait? Because it's kind of getting late. They probably already... Yeah, we didn't, we didn't see much of anything. On past journeys, we've, we've seen uh, whales, uh, orca, uh, seals, lots of, lots of sea life, but... Yeah. Really did you see any whales at all this trip? We did not. No. Uh, we heard people that did. Yeah. Uh, and you know, our friends went on a whale watching trip and they saw plenty of them, mm -hmm. but we didn't see any. Yeah, I, I remember sitting up in Skywalker's one sea day and watch, listening to this couples, two couples complaining that they hadn't seen any whales. And I'm, of course, looking out and scanning, you know, key scan left to right at the horizon. And I saw a bunch just as I was sitting there and they had not seen anything because they were too busy talking to each other that they right. didn't look out. That's right. So, yeah, you do need to focus you have to be, uh, You have to be observant. Yeah. And, he, yeah, and I know the naturalist we had, he would mentioned that if you want to have good viewing, you know, go out on the open deck. Uh, so that you could move around, and also going out on promenade deck and looking out because you're closer to the horizon, it's a That's little right. bit easier to see. That's right. The, the big thing for, for those who have not been out on the ship looking for whales, don't expect to see fins. Oh. I thought you were going to say something else. <laughs> I didn't say it, did I? <laughs> but, uh, Let's look at the pool. <laughs> you have to, you have to uh, uh, don't look for uh, the fins. Uh, when you're trying to spot whales, uh, look spouts? for the spouts yes. because you'll actually you'll see the mist uh, from when the whale blows um, before you'll see anything else. That's right. And you can usually kind of track that. And if you're very lucky, uh, if you follow it, uh, you'll see you'll see the whale uh, come up just enough to where you can see the fin and perhaps the fluke before it yeah. goes underwater. Yeah, it's too bad Bernie's not here because he knows a lot about wildlife. He could probably tell us all how often they come up and so forth. And so you then are in Skagway the next day, I believe, right? Indeed we are. Uh, Skagway's a neat little town, um, uh, pretty touristy, and uh, just it can get clogged with, uh, with people. We how actually had four ships in port four at the time. Four ships in that small? In that little harbor. Um, one of our favorite things to do is to, uh, to, to leave Skagway uh, via their high-speed ferry and go across the little inlet to the small town of Haines. Um, population about 2,500, I think, uh, during season. It uh, dwindles down to almost nothing in the winter. But over in Haines, you see something that's completely different. Um, it's, it's not commercial at all, and there are a number of really nice tours that uh, take off from Haines. And uh, we did another 4x4 four four, uh, backcountry tour, this time on ATVs, not Jeeps, and went up the side of uh, this is a princess one of the mountains. Yes, it was offered by Princess. And um, had just a heck of a, a nice time. Unfortunately, the, again, the weather was poor, visibility was almost non existent. But it was still a wonderful experience. You drive a little Kawasaki mules. Oh, yeah. And they, uh, uh, there was a whole train of them as we drove up the side of the hill. And we would stop periodically for views. Who was driving this time, Barbara? You? No. Okay. <laughs> 
So yeah, once again, you know, please don't get us stuck. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> it was it was it was really nice uh, as long as you kind of paid attention and followed uh, the tracks uh, of the folks in front of you, you, you did just fine. I think that's why we don't do it because we'd probably be fighting over who would drive. Yeah, we didn't have to fight. <laughs> no. <laughs> But it was very steep on occasion, uh, but again, the, the little mules were incredibly powerful, and uh, it was it was really neat. We did uh, find one little small lake where we stopped for an overview, and while we were there, the fog lifted enough to where you got a, a pretty decent view, and then closed back in again. Of course, of course. So did this tour leave from Skagway, or did you have to go over to Haines? This is from Haines. Okay. Well, no, Princess got us to Haines. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, so yeah, we left from Skagway, we over. took the boat over, and then the, and the, our, our little tour guides on the bus were hysterical. You know, natives that have lived there all their lives, talking about how small their little town is, and it was pretty funny. They were pretty cute. Yeah, the ban banter back and forth yeah. was really fun. It was oh, fun. That sounds like fun. Yeah. And then we had a fabulous lunch. Um, they stopped us at this little lodge that she served us lunch, which was halibut that was uh, tempura, um, you know, in a tempura batter, beer batter. It was delicious, and mm -hmm. it was all you can eat, you know, fish and chips, basically, and a wonderful fruit salad, and it was very nice, very, very nice. Yeah. And when you got back to the ship, you got on it, or did you come right back to the ship? Actually, yeah. we did come right back, but prior to leaving for this cruise, I found out a friend of mine who I talked to on Facebook um, was going on an Alaska cruise too, and so we compared itineraries, come to find out we were both in Skagway on the same day. They happened to be on the Celebrity Solstice, so we met up in the afternoon and um, had some ice cream and walked around town, and then we went and before we went back to our appropriate ships, which happened to be both at the same side, mm -hmm. um, we sat and had a beer and just, you know, socialized for a while. That was fun. Yeah. That was fun. Well, that's fun. Yeah, that's a long, um, you know, way sometimes. If you're that ship parked right at the back there, you got long hike. But they have, like, a little shuttle. They had a shuttle, yes. yeah. yeah. We were the one in the front. His ship was the back. Yeah. And I think they have, like, a, a shuttle transit well, sort of transit bus that they have that you can pay a small fee that takes you right into town. Right. It's two dollars per person. Oh, one, good. I'm glad one way. That. Yeah. Uh, that will take you uh, pretty much anywhere through the downtown area. Yeah. Yeah. We we usually will walk. It's about a 10, 15 minute walk. But if the weather's not very nice, it's, that could be a pain in the butt. Right. Yeah, you, but it's it's an it's an easy. It's all flat pretty much. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Next day, uh, so did you, I imagine you guys must have been exhausted. You probably didn't do anything in the evening. No, we didn't I do anything that night. Fashion. I think actually we did room service that evening. Ah. And yeah. uh, again, one of the things I should point out is that the room service hamburgers are really good. Mm -hmm. um, they're quite different from the ones that they that they do up on the open decks. Um, and uh, they're, they're, the patties are thicker, and just uh, it's really well done. So I recommend that. And Barb had the they've got a vegetarian sandwich, and that is uh, pretty tasty. Yeah. So it and it's just again it, it's one of the the options of doing anytime dining that you can choose to do this, uh, or you can get dressed up and go to the dining room or Horizon Court if you wish. Yeah, I love the clubhouse. I the clubhouse sandwich. I love the clubhouse yes. sandwich and room service. <laughs> Uh, and it's the only time I ever eat them. So, Isn't that funny? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So next port was uh, Juneau, uh, right? Juneau. Juneau. Yeah. And we Capital were, of the state. It is the capital of the state and uh, landlocked. And landlocked, yes. There are no roads that, that lead you anywhere for, uh, out of Juneau. The only access in and out is via airplane or ship. Mm. But, uh, That's a beautiful harbor there where you're coming in. It is. Time. Very pretty. It was uh, pretty foggy, though. We were, you know, we had some pretty... <laughs> Once again, four ships in port, so it was incredibly busy. Um, originally, our plan had been that we were going to uh, uh, to get off the ship and, and ride the tram up to the top of Mount Roberts. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, right. Where there are some really were you nice views. Right by the tram. We were there? very close. Okay, you're right there, good. Okay, because you can be a bit further we south. Were, than we that. were the, the furthest one south. Oh, okay, good. But we were still not that far yeah, from, the, that far. from the from the tram. However, um, as we watched the uh, the low the low ceiling, uh, we knew the views were not going to be good. Views, so we opted to stay on the ship, and we were just dirty stay-at-homes all day and night. Oh, that's 
fine. That's okay with cruising, isn't it? You can do whatever you want to do. Exactly. exactly. Now, I'm just wondering that tram thing. I know they sell it through the excursion. So yeah, those we were people just do it on our own, that buy it through the excursion, I guess they don't have a refund if it's foggy, right? Eh? I don't I think so. I think it is yeah. rain or shine. They'll still take you up there. They'll I mean, the tram was still going up and down, but uh, I don't, I'm not sure what they were seeing. Yeah, so that was, you were probably smart to just wait and see and what the weather would be like. Yeah. You know, we figured that we would just take our chances because, uh, again, it, uh, the tram uh, uh, stop is very close to where the ships dock. Yeah, and you guys have been to Juno many yeah. times, so it's not yeah. like you're... Yeah, yeah. The, oh, for those, again, who have not been to Juno, some of the, the, the biggest attractions, uh, whale watching out of Juno can be absolutely wonderful. Um, the uh, trip up to see the Mendenhall Glacier is also very nice. Mm -hmm. They have uh, flight seeing uh, options if you want to pay for that. And we haven't done it, but I understand they're, they're marvelous. But there are some, some uh, land-based excursions that will take you right up to the, to the base of the glacier. Very pretty. Yeah, yeah, I know we've been up to the, again, uh, we've been to Mendenhall and done other things in Juno, so you can always just click on my Juno label that's on the right side and you can see what we've done there. Because we've taken uh, a charter bus up to Mendenhall, we've taken the local bus up to Mendenhall, we've hiked all around. And one day we just went and had sushi in Juno and had a really nice day. So, yeah. so yes, do whatever you want. We did a princess tour, one of our early trips into Juno, that was a photo safari. And there was only eight of us, I believe. And this was a princess tour, and it was awesome. There was eight of us and a professional photographer, not one of the ship photographers, but somebody local, who took us around and tried to get you to open your eyes to see the things that you wouldn't normally see if you're just walking by. We were walking down this one path, and he stopped us, and he said, look right. And when we looked right, we had these beautiful trees in the front, we had the still water in the, in front, behind that, and then the glacier right behind that. It was, mm -hmm. it's to this day one of my most favorite pictures I've ever taken. And it was because he's saying, don't look so, you know, you have to be open to seeing things. I, w I would have never seen that. And it is, it was a spectacular view. Mm. It was just, it was Carbon a great Carbon Trader are both great photographers, too. We love, you know, sharing and comparing. And, yeah. yeah, it was yeah. fun. That's great. Yeah, my trick is always quit looking forward, turn around and look behind you. To yeah. See the view. yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Wow, so that was your day in Juno. That sounds perfectly relaxing. It was wonderful. It was. Uh, I can't wait to get on board another ship. <laughs> <laughs> Me <laughs> either, tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> get into that one. You're <laughs> lucky. Ketchikan. You're in Ketchikan the next day. Ketchikan is famous for its rainfall. Mm. Uh -oh. the, uh, they measure their rainfall in feet, not inches. Um, one of the people that we uh, talked with uh, in Ketchikan said that their average rainfall is approximately 13 feet of rain per year. And of course, it rained. It rained. Of course. From uh, kind of a, a, a heavy drizzle to a fairly significant rain. Uh, we had, uh, again, this would be our fourth time in Ketchikan, and we've seen uh, the, the totem uh, pole exhibits, which are very nice. Mm -hmm. And there's some other wild, wildlife uh, excursions that are also very nice. Uh, in good weather, walking around town is really neat because they've got a creekside area uh, with lots of little shops and uh, little wooden bridges that crisscross the, the creek. And it's just a wonderful way to spend time just browsing and not doing anything. Uh, you can do as much or as little as you care to and catch a can. We chose to go to the uh, Alaskan lumber <coughs> Which, uh, which was very cool. Um, we elected to walk there. Mm -hmm. And uh, although it was kind of a heavy drizzle when we left the ship, by the time we got to where the show was offered, it was outright raining. And of course, we didn't bother to take umbrellas because it didn't seem like you'd need them. <laughs> Wrong. So if you're in Ketchikan and the weather is at all poor, do plan to take a, an umbrella because uh, it, it can go from just kind of bad to awful very quickly. <laughs> it sounds like Vancouver. It could be like that too. It changes in five minutes. And, and the Lumberjack show, I mean, it's, it's 
corny. It's corny, but it was so fun. Yeah. It was just, you just have a hoot and good time. And I mean, anybody who knows me knows I'm not quiet and shy. And so I got right into cheering for these guys. And I mean, they were pretty easy on the eyes too. So <laughs> it was, it was a pretty fun show to go to. Oh. <laughs> Do you remember what the cost was for that? It was uh $35, I yeah, think. Yeah. And the thing that was interesting is that that was the price uh, of the Princess excursion. Okay. And it was absolutely the same price uh, as you paid for a ticket if you walked up to the ticket booth at the show. I think if you had walked up, they might have a cheaper price. But if you tried to get your tickets online ahead of time, it was the exact same price. Yeah. And we like to make sure that we're going to be able to get in and do something. So we went ahead and did it through Princess because sure. it was the same price as booking it online. So it was, but it was, it was just a fun thing to do. But when it was over, it was pouring. So we rode the little bus back to the ship and went in and tried to dry out. Was, where was your ship dock compared to the lumberback? As far the away as it could be. Yeah. We, were at birth, we were at birth number four, yeah. which is the one that's farthest uh, from the center of town. Yeah. Again, four ships in port, so yeah. it, was, it was very busy. But they did that's have that's a bus nice. that, took, that picked people up. Oh, okay, good. Because that's a nice berth if you want to go through the little tunnel and kind of get out of the tourist yes. area, right. part of the town. That's a nice little spot. And there's a great restaurant right there called Annabelle. Yes. Uh, yes. 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 Oh, yes, I've been there. Great crab legs, just saying. <laughs> there's a... Uh, Cold uh, beer. The one nice thing about the uh, uh, having walked to, in the rain to the, uh, the Lumberjack show, they also had a bus. But the bus was not leaving immediately because they were going to wait until enough passengers oh. uh, were there to make the, the trip. The difference was that by walking, we, were, we got in line to get into the seating because it's open seating. Okay. And so our seat selection was much better yeah. than, uh, than those that came in on the bus because they came in considerably later. Yeah, and then they all come on mass and try to get a seat. And, right. and the bottom line is, again, the show is open because it is not limited to the princess ship. So you had people from each of the four ships that were in port, uh, as well as uh, independent visitors. Yeah, and it's it's exposed to the elements. So I, I never covered. Seen that it's covered, and they actually have heat yeah. heat lamps in the okay. cover, and the seats are cushioned. I mean, it was considering where it was and how hard it was raining, uh, we were quite comfortable. In fact, I'm, I'm glad we weren't a, up a little bit farther because people up there were taking their jackets off. It was getting too hot under those, <laughs> under those heaters. So we're getting a sun tan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we had just enough warmth that it was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. It was a lot of fun. Ooh, Enjoyed so it. Lovely. And each time your team, because they split you and you cheer for a team of lumberjacks and Ours was the Canadian team, by the way. It was. It was. Um, <laughs> and each time our team would win, they have a postcard that's signed by each of the four lumberjacks, and they hand it out to somebody, right, on, on our side. Well, of course, they were going for the rowdiest person. I got a card. Really? <laughs> That's go figure that I could uh, be rowdy enough. You're the biggest cheerleader I, I around. I want you on my team. That's <laughs> um, sailing out of Juno is really pretty too. I find like you can see lots of eagles and stuff. Oh but yeah. Yeah. If the weather's not that great, you're not going to see a whole lot. We you didn't. pass an area that's got a whole bunch of eagle nests on the yeah, we didn't, side. Yeah, we didn't see much of anything. No, there's very little <laughs> activity. And again, of I think so. That was Ketchikan. I said Juno, but yeah, yeah Ketchikan. So we had a Ketchikan. Once again, okay. because it was so late in the season and the salmon run was pretty much over, the uh, eagle activity was definitely on the slowing down side. Mm -hmm. There were areas, I'm sure. Well, we saw them in Haines. We saw them a lot in Haines. Yes. Did um, um, you, that day, did you do anything that day on the ship, by that night on the ship when you came back? can't remember trying to... What night was it that they had the Mongolian barbecue? I think oh. that was it. They had a Mongolian barbecue in Horizon Court, and it was really I'm, I've very never good. seen them do that before, but it was delicious. You go up there, and you take a plate. They have all these vegetables, and you put what vegetables you want on your plate. Then you give it to them, and you choose a protein. It was They had chicken. They had pork. They had beef. They had shrimp. shrimp. Um, you choose what you want in it, and either rice or rice noodles and they grill it and 
put a sauce on it. I don't know what the mm. sauce is, but it was Very delicious. Mm. I loved it. Mm. I wanted to go back for seconds, but I didn't. That was another thing uh, that's a, a little bit different on the coral and the island is the openness of the horizon court. Yes. It is very open. Uh, there's quite a bit of seating. It, uh, there's not quite as many uh, food options as there are on the, on the larger ships. But again, the, having the space to maneuver uh, at, at was wonderful. Yeah, the coral's been renovated, so they don't have all those curves. But That's the right. island's getting renovated to be just like it. I, I haven't seen the new the new coral. With yeah, it was really it's very different because you. They did a nice job. You yeah, don't nice see job. those curves as you mentioned. Yeah, the yeah. more straight line Dream things. Line, yeah. But uh, the the food is easy to access, and there were no lines. Uh, just very nice. Um, one thing they do on Alaska, they have the bullion station when you're going yes. through the glaciers yes. there. That's always a nice yes. treat yes. to get that. And did they do an Alaskan buffet? They did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did. Another, another great thing. Oh, I just love it. I just wish I could. I, you know, I, I see a lot of this in Vancouver, like or in BC, but it's always a nice treat to head up there and just enjoy it. If you enjoy seafood at all, yeah. Alaska is uh, it's, it's good eating. Mm. She had one last sea day sailing down between. Oh, um, what beautiful sailing that I is! Know. <laughs> it's Especially so when gorgeous. you're between Vancouver Island and the mainland. Yes. Uh, yeah, it, it was lovely. beautiful. How yeah. was the weather that day? Nice. It actually, it actually uh, cleared up very nicely. It was still cold, but it was uh, very nice. Uh, we had uh, originally planned to do the ultimate balcony dinner that last night but uh, ended up having it brought inside the cabin yeah. because it was just too cabin cold. dinner. Yeah. It was too cold and windy <laughs> on the balcony. Oh, okay. But it was still fun. Yeah. It was the four of us, and we did it. And we were a little squishy, but it was very enjoyable. And for those who have not had occasion to do the ultimate balcony dinner, Princess doesn't advertise it heavily at all on the ships, but it's uh, they usually uh, do them most nights. Uh, the issue is that they... Uh, they're, they're staff intensive, so they uh, they have to dedicate two or three uh, people to your individual dinner. So they they usually do no more than two or three of them on any given night. Mm. And uh, what's the cost of that? The, the cost is fifty dollars per person, okay. but it includes a cocktail of your choice, uh, a half bottle of, of good French champagne, uh, uh, flowers, appetizer, uh, you have flowers, uh, salad. And a main course of either surf or turf or surf and turf. Uh, the it's the uh, beef Diane is the is the turf, and of course uh, the larger lobster tails, not the kind you get in the main dining room. Mm. And uh, it, it, then the, a dessert, and it's just absolutely exquisite. It's one of those remarkable things that uh, yes, fifty dollars a head is a little is a little heavy, but it's a it's an event you will remember for a long time. And they send in the professional photographer too to come take a picture of you. So it's kind of a fun remembrance of it. And so you get a free picture too. So it's it's a hundred dollars a couple, and it really is worth it. It's just a, a nice pampering. And I really enjoyed doing it the last night. I thought that was pretty, number one. They didn't come in with baked Alaska, so we missed that. But <laughs> but it was um, a really nice night to do it on. Uh, we really really enjoyed it. What a nice way to like say goodbye. And it was off. Mm -hmm. nice yeah. quiet evening. Put on some music in the cabin and just had a great time. Um, one of the things Barb and Craig were very excited, and I was so happy for them. They got invited to the most traveled passenger party, so Yay! they qualified. This was the first time. So tell us a bit about that. Okay. It was a nice little party. Uh, it was it was held in the uh, wedding chapel, as I recall. The wedding chapel and the card room were kind of opened up to to be the venue for the party. Um, again, there were only 69 elites and uh, 120 or so odd uh, platinums. Uh, the unique thing about it is that uh, attendance is based on the number of sea days, not the number of cruises. And so, in many occasions, you will see elites that do not make the cut to attend the party, and platinums will, because they happen to have more days. They may have yes, more it's a, cruises. Yes, a small cruise, obviously. Yeah, because after 150 days, so yeah. you're talking, wow, that'd be, I've been on cruises where the cutoff was 900 days to go to yeah. the travel party. Yeah. yeah, but it was it was very nice. Uh, uh, drinks aplenty. They 
they circulated, uh, the staff circulated with their drink trays and they, they basically nice kept, to, they kept to drinking as long as you wanted and the uh, many, many uh, hors d'oeuvre setups, uh, all kinds of different things. Uh, they had some, a couple of things uh, that were crab based, uh, uh, shrimp of course, uh, they even uh, there was a chocolate totem pole. Really? Yeah, yeah, made out of chocolate. It was uh, it was quite impressive. A and couple of the staff had uh, had said that they were going to try to spirit it away to their cabin yeah. after the party was over. The thing I really liked about it, because having not done this before, is how friendly the staff was, and how they all came around and talked to you. And, and this was upper level staff. Uh, yeah, the, officers, the, yeah, officers. Officers. Now, these were not the people that you would normally converse with. Uh, during nice. the course of a day. Yeah, it was very nice. And when you come in, they you pose with the captain, and they, they give you a copy of that picture. It's a yep. and, yeah, it's a nice souvenir. Yeah, indeed. And uh, it was it was amazing. They, I mean, they delivered the photographs on the spot. Yeah, it, it was very to. fast. Yeah. But uh, it was it was a very nice experience. Um, again, it's a twenty fourth cruise, and our our first shot at it. We'll, uh, we'll, one um, of many, I'm sure. Undoubtedly have others in the future, but uh, we certainly did enjoy this one. I'm glad I took a picture of our invite because they collected them. So at least I have a picture of it, the, <laughs> of our first one. Yeah. So uh, what would you, any like last minute tips that you'd give to people that are planning this seven day Alaskan cruise? And uh, Just make sure that you're prepared for any kind of weather. Yeah, because uh, it can be anything. When we've done Alaska before, we've been in 80 degree temperature in the heat. Yes. And this was not that case this time. We had definitely colder weather, but just be prepared and bring gloves, bring a warm hat, bring, yeah, bring layers. And remember how changeable the weather can be because you may find that uh, uh, the weather reports for the past several days prior to boarding have been in the 60s and 70s. And then you get there and you find that it's in the high 40s and low 50s. So you, you just have to kind of be prepared, even if it doesn't look like you should be. Yeah. And like Craig said, it can change just hour to hour or day to day. It absolutely it does. Much so. Um, now, anything you want to add about your Alaska trip? Again, just enjoy the wonders of it. The wonders of the beauty around you. Most of us come from cities. You know, most of us live in cities and we see concrete jungles. To get out there and see the total nature in front of you like that is just spectacular. And again, put your camera down once in a while and enjoy it because it's so beautiful. That was one of the things about the poor weather because uh, we would commonly say we're not taking our good cameras out in this. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, obviously you forced yourself to back away from the lens and use your broader vision. Oh, but you still had your cell phone. They take good pictures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Uh, yeah, I think it's hard for people to sort of turn off and sort of say, okay, well, you know what? I, I always say, just put everything down. You don't have to be entertained every minute. Just sit back and look at the view. Yeah, exactly. Do they have an enclosed pool on this ship? Like they do. Yeah. Yes. They so do. that's always something they you could do as well is go out there and yeah. actually have a retractable roof. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. I remember one night going up and, and actually – swimming late at night and looking up at the sky. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, it was closed, but yeah. Yeah, those are, those are the things you're going to remember. Not that nice you ship. sat on your phone surfing the web the, for, no. you know. <laughs> Actually, one of, the, uh, one of the really unique things for the adventurous is um, sailing through Gr Glacier Bay, looking at the glaciers from the hot tub. Yeah. <laughs> now that's decadence. Thank you. You got to have an Alaskan beer as well. Indeed. Yeah. Alaska, yeah. Yes. Indeed. <laughs> now, one thing I remember um, is that the laundry closes on the day that you're going through Glacier Bay National Park because they can't. Right. Yeah. A lot of things were closed while Indeed. we were going to the park. One additional thing that we noticed uh, uh, on this cruise that we have not seen in the past is. Uh, for instance, will not they don't dispense uh, your coffee in in paper cups. Mm -hmm. They do not give you uh, stirs the stirring sticks. Um, they really cut back on the uh, amount of potential waste that uh, that, uh, that can occur while they're in Glacier Bay. Yeah, I guess that would be horrible if something flew off the ship and then yeah. Oh, that's, that's a good point. Yep. Yeah. 
Um, now, Barb and Craig are here for tonight as well in Vancouver, but tell us where you're going now. We board the uh, Grand Princess tomorrow, and we're taking off on a 10-day uh, California coastal, which will go down as uh, far south as Los Angeles, and then turn around and come back here to Vancouver. Mm -hmm. Where our car is waiting us, because we drove up here. So um, and then we're spending some time with some other friends, because Vicki and Bernie are otherwise occupied on a, on a cruise. On a cruise. <laughs> <laughs> so we're spending time with some other, another couple up here, and then we'll eventually head home. Eventually, yeah, yeah, that's good. No, I, I, we love Barb and Craig and what they do, and we're just gonna follow along maybe once when we retire, because Barb has just recently retired, so she's enjoying her retirement. Absolutely. Yeah, and hopefully I'll get a chance to talk with them about this coming cruise, because I've gotten now the capability of recording Skype conversations. So. Oh, cool. Yeah, so we'll be able to maybe do this again on it, because it's so informative. So post your comments and, and questions, and if uh, necessary, I can track them down and send them an email to get them to answer it if you have any questions. But thanks for listening, and thanks, Barbara and Craig. We really appreciate it. Thank you. We love you. We love, love you, too. too. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you for taking the time out today to listen to my podcast. Uh, if you'd like more information about cruising and where we've been and who we've talked to, check out my Facebook page, Cruising Princess Cruise Lines with Vicki, or check out my blog, vickiandbernietravel.blogspot.ca. Please note that all comments and questions and information here is all just from my own personal experience or those of the people I'm interviewing. We are in no way affiliated with any cruise line or travel agent and we are just avid fans of cruising and we are hoping that perhaps some of our cruising experience can help you. If you have any questions or comments please feel free to leave a comment on the blog and I will try to get back and respond to your questions. Again, thank you for listening.